first of all, are you recording? Yes, okay. I'm recording. So we're starting the small, uh, just a few lectures on which are, which are called Mystery of Physics. And for those who are going to watch this, better to watch some uh, uh, some previous videos on uh, numbers and names, just to to get some some information on mathematics and the ideas that are used here. But it's up, up, up to you guys. Okay, so mystery of physics. Uh, what I want to what I want to do, what I want to say mostly is that that physics of uh, 20th century and 21st century is very much <coughs> very much different from the physics that we had long before, like Newton physics or physics of other, other physicists that was put uh, was was uh, that we got before. Uh, the beginning of 20th century. 20th century was a really revolutionary century for physics and there were so many ideas that most of the people just, just don't know about it. They heard something but mostly they don't understand what is it or what is it about at all. So this is just to clear things just a little and to give you some uh, some view to the future of physics too because uh, this physics is not yet finished. The mystery of physics is still there. Physics is coming, is advancing pretty fast and right now we are experiencing the new, the beginning of new scientific and technological revolution, which definitely will bring our to new horizons in physics and in other sciences, by the way, too. So the history uh, of of the new physics started. Uh, that's what I would say uh, in 1911. That was pretty far ago. 1911, right? Uh, the uh, Scientist Heinke Hammerling Honnes from Netherlands uh, was working in Leiden, in Leiden University, and he was the first uh, person in the world who managed to create a cryogenic system to make a liquid helium. Helium is a gas, as you know, right? The second one in in the periodic table. Helium. I mean, helium. I Actually, four, huh? Question. Yes, question. When you say gas, you mean at normal earth pressure, normal earth temperature? That's the idea? Yes. Okay. Yes, but yeah. Uh, so, uh, helium with this, uh, with this, his uh, atom weight is, is four. Uh, so, he managed to make it liquid at the temperature close to 4.2 Kelvin. And Kelvin is this absolute. Huh? 4.2? Yes, uh, it's very, very low. Kelvin is an absolute uh, absolute temperature grade, probably you know, right? So zero Kelvin is absolute zero, cause absolute zero, it cannot be achieved. So just four plus plus two, four, four point two Kelvin. Uh, and with this temperature, he managed to start a new new series of experiments that to, to study the properties, the properties of different materials uh, with these temperatures and everything. He was uh, working on measuring resistivity to uh, to the electric current uh, resi or resistance. Resisti I, I guess resistance. Resistance. But I don't resistance. know precisely what it means. Okay. Does, if it does, if it doesn't matter, don't don't. don't okay, matter. I'll I'll tell you. Resistance to to electric to electric current, right? So. Uh, and he, see, he starts to imagine there were different opinions on that, what would happen with the low temperatures, with the resistance, would it drop a little, or some people, they, they think that it will be more, even uh, become greater, different opinions. So he started measuring and uh, he found pretty soon, he was, uh, you know, experienced scientist, so at, at one moment he suddenly found out that the resistance of the solid mercury, solid Mercury. With this temperature, mercury, you know what mercury is, right? It's a liquid usually with normal temperature. It becomes solid, it's frozen. So it is a metal. Mercury is a metal. So he made uh, just a, like a wire of this metal and measured the resistance of this thing. And he suddenly found out that the resistance dropped to zero. Like zero. As far as he could measure it, it was just zero. What means resistance? Then, then he then he made something something else to measure it more accurately. He he curved this this line of solid mercury into a circle, yeah. and he induced current there, electric current. 
and he saw that that is what about resistance and he saw that electric current was was keeping going and going and going in the circle without any decrease as far as he could measure he measured uh, many many times and he didn't see any decrease of this current for for a long time so he come to a conclusion that resistance so you may say inner friction right for that um, that actually stops usually the any current induced in the in the wire would stop if you do not supply electricity mm -hmm. electric electrical energy it would stop here it was not stopping it was not stopping at all many years later there was made like a, maybe the longest uh, the longest um, experiment in history uh, in this closed circuit right of metal it was not mercury already it was plumbum as i remember something like this but it doesn't matter uh, they start induced the current there and they measured for 27 years 27 years the current was going there going 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 never stopped and never decreased so as far as we know that the resistance to the current to this to this low with, low, with these low temperatures is dropping right to zero so this is Holmes. in 1937 Another, uh, there was Soviet scientist, Peter Kapitza. Uh, he found another interesting, interesting thing. <clears throat> with the helium too. Interesting enough, there was helium too. This was with mercury, by the way, but with the temperature of, of liquid helium, right? So let's say liquid, right? Liquid, liquid helium. <clears throat> uh, he found that uh, liquid helium with the temperature a little below than this, just actually close to this temperature. He found out that put, when it put in the tube, inside the tube, right? And when you, again, induce the movement of this helium in the tube, it would never stop. There are no friction or so-called inner friction is called viscosity viscosity so it was totally zero so again like electric current they they tried for 27 years the same probably i don't know i don't, don't know exactly uh, was it done like for that long time but anyway nothing happens when this there is, when the movement somehow is started it will go and go and go and go and go for years with no friction so it's like in space, you just launch something, right? According to Newton laws, it will go like infinitely, right? Like stone. If you throw it in the space, it will go ahead infinitely, right? The same thing was happening not in space, but in the closed tube. Well, not closed. If you if you make infinite tube, right, and put there uh, helium or with this temperature, it will go there like forever. So this. Uh, this uh, phenomenon, this phenomena was called, this one was called superconductivity. Conductivity. And this was called superfluidity. And those phenomena, there was less uh, ones of, of the most uh, impressive ones. It's very, very, it was very difficult even to imagine something like this suddenly discovered on Earth, right? Something, something unbelievable. So this was in 1911, this was the start of a lots and lots and lots, like a whole avalanche of discoveries that <coughs> comes, um, comes to the creation of quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics, or now it is called quantum field theory. Field theory. It's actually uh, this, the same, just different names. And the field theory, of course, it's more advanced than just quantum mechanics. Just I've also heard of quantum physics. Is yeah. that related? Yes, the same thing. Same thing. Okay. Same thing. Same thing. Uh, again, uh, like close to close to this, in nineteen, another physicist, Albert Einstein, in nineteen oh five, he published a work. Published a uh, published a paper right in one in the one of the main scientific journals uh, regarding this uh, what later was called theory of relativity relativity theory right 
relativity theory. And uh, what actually the first thing that comes from relativity theory was one of the really amazing thing too. Because what was postulated here was something like that. We know uh, the, uh, the law of addition uh, of uh, editing, uh, editing two velocities, right? If two people, like two persons, right? Do you Most, mean adding two velocities? Yes, adding, okay. adding of velocities. It's going to each other. And the one make one step towards another one, right? One step. At the same time, this one make one step towards this guy, right? Mm -hmm. What would be the speed of uh, of them of them closing coming I mean, here? Yeah, the speed. One step and one step. They become closer into how many steps? By two steps. Right. So, like for example, it's per second. Like so, two steps, right? Mm -hmm. Two steps per second. The same thing. It's 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 called like addition of speed, right? If you velocity v1 and velocity v2 okay and they come in together we have the total velocity of them coming to each other would be v1 plus v2 mm -hmm. right it's well known from the school Ooh. i'm sorry so what einstein postulated or discovered whatever you whatever you call it he found the interesting thing then when we go when we say <coughs> when we talk not about people or stones or whatever whatever when we talk about light there come interesting thing if uh, there's a light and light is traveling with a speed which is usually denoted as c and c is 3 10 8 meters per second 300,000 kilometers per second mm. or 300 uh, million so three, per ten, 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 10 by power 8 meters per second right so this yeah. is the speed of light yeah. and uh, for example any some car or maybe some rocket right writing with another speed like speed of the rocket vr right and they're coming to each other light going like this mm -hmm. What would be the speed of them coming together? According to this, it would be VR plus C, right? Yeah. Not at all. Interesting enough that the speed how they're closing would be just C. So we, we, we may write VR plus VC, still VC. So C. It's an amazing thing very difficult to understand how it goes but that was the postulation and becoming of theory of relativity even more when not rocket coming but like two, two two beams of light coming to each other right each with the speed of c this the uh, the uh, the summary speed like of going them to each other would be still c so it it looks like C plus C equals C. And you told me this before, which is why I'm not surprised. And interesting, that's not that's not a problem. But uh, interesting enough that that was actually measured in experiment, an experiment right before this paper was published. Uh, Einstein claimed that he never he never saw this uh, this uh, paper, but anyway, it was tested after that many times, thousands of times. It is correct. Even more than that, if we go in not this way, but this way, so they're going, one is, you know, trying to follow another one, right? And when you measure the speed, it should be V minus V, right? V1 minus V2. It will still be C. And that only applies to light? That's all forms of electromagnetic That radiation. applies to everything, but with light is the most, like, astonishing, right? I see. But... Um, Whatever, like stones, if the, if the stones coming closer to the speed of light, it becomes the same thing. Yeah. If you have not not photons, the, the particles of light are called photons, right? Not photons coming to each other, whatever, but any stones that are coming very close to the speed of light will be the same thing. If you if the speed is if the speed of the stone is like 
near C, V1, and another stone again near C. So V1 plus V2 will still be near C. So it's there are formulas of this. There are formulas that uh, coming from this uh, from this theory. But anyway, so so this then this um, this phenomenon and uh, these uh, these results they put a uh, like foundation of the new science actually because many experiments were were done since then they all confirmed this with a high very high precision so something really interesting is happening on there and uh, nobody really understood what is what is going on right so okay so let's continue with some some ideas on this right This is not related, but this is all before World War II. Yeah. Albert Einstein had already published this theory of relativity while he was still in Germany. 1905. Yeah. yeah. A long and time. The Germans pulled that amount of Germany. He left yeah. voluntarily. Ah, he left voluntarily. Okay. Before, before anybody was forced to, so to speak. Right, right. Okay. I think there was even, yeah. Sorry. Well, we can go into the history yeah, later. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, since then there were uh, other interesting experiments, like for example, with the liquid helium, right? Uh, if you put liquid helium into a glass, right? And put it on the table, for example, right? Yeah. Uh, they found out that uh, pretty fast uh, helium goes out of the glass in an interesting way. It goes, it looks like against, against the laws of physics, right? It goes up, which needs energy to go, right? Mm -hmm. But it goes up, it goes down, and then it's spread over the table. As its temperature rises? No. You just done it. It's doing it yourself. Room temperature, no, no change. No, it's not. Room, it's liquid, liquid helium. Yeah, but is it getting? Is the temperature changing at that? Point Nothing now? changing. Nothing is changing. It goes like by itself. It looks like a, like a natural process. So this is completely same pressure. Same everything, everything, everything. Yes, everything is. Yeah. And, and, it, and again, it leaves the glass, but it doesn't evaporate. It spreads no. up the sides and then yes. goes down again. Yeah, it it can evaporate too, but uh, pretty fast it goes and spreads just over. Oh, over interesting. Huh. Yeah. That's of course you know, understandable that there are no friction here, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, helium helium is super fluid, so it's it's one thing. Another thing uh, that was again. Uh, was found. They were trying to uh, to separate. They, there was a theory that uh, this helium it contains of two parts, like two two mixed liquids. One liquid is superfluid and another is not. Like that was, and they're trying to separate one from each from another, right? So what they what they did, they they uh, put helium into some reservoir, right? And they connected it with other one with the ultra thin capillar right mm -hmm. so they would uh, and they are expecting that here it will be like really super fluid thing and here will be the rest yeah. of the helium four and they know that the regular helium it cannot go through this ultra thin it was tested right so in the temperature a little higher than this temperature of 4.2 right Kelvin none, none of helium can go through this through this thing right okay. then they low temperature until it comes super fluid and they found out that the whole thing goes there the, the, the whole the, the all, all of this all this goes like for example here maybe it's not like okay so maybe why yeah. all of it yeah so the so the whole whole bunch of this goes there everything so 
It looked like, and later it was confirmed, that the whole mass of helium-4 becomes superfluid oh. with this temperature, all of it. But, but, okay, and that's very interesting because there is a, a well-known distribution, actually, you know, that's in the, all, the, all the molecules, you know, that if you have some, uh, some gas or liquid or whatever, some of the, mo the mo molecules are always moving, right? And some of them uh, are moving really, really fast. So they have more temperature than the regular temperature. That's why they wanted to, to separate yeah. one from yeah. another, right? There is a distribution of, of, of temperatures in, in helium. But despite all these ideas, the whole helium become superfluid and come here. And it was not called uh, nothing. Everything was the same. Yes, okay, question. How did it pass through the tube if liquid helium couldn't pass through the tube? Did it transform? Not superfluid. And... Not superfluid. Regular helium for liquid cannot go through this tube. But if it comes this to superfluid level, I see. Not the part of it comes through, but the whole thing. Because the oh, whole thing I see. So, so, so <laughs> helium could be liquid before it's superfluid. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the same thing like here, some molecules are, have much, much, much more temperature than this. So some of the molecules in helium here have a temperature much more than protein 2. Much more. Still, gone here and here again, some molecules have temperature much more than 4.2. So somehow molecules which shouldn't be fluid, superfluid, they still go there. Then they found even more interesting thing. Even this superfluid here. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I have another question. Yeah. This might be sure, uh, sure. off topic, but mm. if if the entire fluid was cooled to 4.2 Kelvin, how is any part of it higher than 4.2 Kelvin? Well, this is called energy distribution between the atoms. If you have atoms, right? Each. Each liquid or each gas has atoms, right? And atoms are moving. It's called brown motion. Right. When they're moving, they have a distribution of of velocities. Okay. Some of them, because it's the stochastic, the movies there is very you know stochastic in our world, right? It's um, probable. So there's some probability that some of these some of these molecules, some of these atoms, has the speed much higher than others. Okay. Because they collide, they, they hit each other, you know, everything is okay. uh, goes like this word stochastic for this actually. So it's not predictable, right? So they, they, they can they can hit uh, each other with a, with a, with a great uh, with a great speed and one of one of the atoms can't just jump, you know, could be with a great so they say that some of the atoms have more have the temperature more than the others. Because they move faster? Because they move faster, yeah. But are there fewer of them? Fewer, of course. Yes. Okay. There is a there is a distribution of this actually. There's, I, I don't want to, to write. But you know, when you say distribution, you mean the vast majority are all around the same. Vast majority are close to, to that. To and that. some are lower and some are higher. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Exactly. But in this, they all pass through this through these thin tubes mm -hmm. through this capillary, right? Mm -hmm. uh, later, we found even more interesting thing. If you have a swirl here right for example you put some stick and make it you know yeah, swirl, swirl right so there's a swirl here so it's a like rotation movement like in you did in the in the cup of tea right when you mixing it with the mm -hmm. with a spoon right you can you can induce this motion right and this motion will never stop because there's the, yes this because there are no friction inside right so this swirl will stay there forever. It, this is a superfluid thing, one of the features. But the most interesting part is not even this. So it will stay there forever. Just imagine what will happen. This, this, you know, this, uh, right, we know that in super, superfluid rotation cannot stop, right? Now, we put this capillary here. Yeah. And the level goes through lower, 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 lower. And of course, the swirl here should disappear because there is no any more yeah. helium here. Yeah. And what do you think? It goes what anywhere. Happens? It appears here. 
same soil. <laughs> it goes and it went somehow. It went through this thin capillar. How, you know, right? Just imagine what 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 happened with this huge movement in this capillar. So lots and lots and lots and lots of things um, were discovered in this thing. No friction though means preservation of motion. Yes. But the question then is why would it still why would it move from one jar to the other jar because that would include starting motion and then stopping motion while retaining the spinning motion. There are lots of questions there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. More questions than answers. That's what they found, right? So there was a lot and that and mo much much more. Much much more. Um like Okay. So there comes and uh, out of this and some other experiments, which which show like for example again one of the famous experiments that were made with uh, separate particles, right? Separate separate particle like photon, or well, not only photon, electron, photon, other particles. They tried it with molecules, atoms, many things like later. When it goes. And goes to like, for example, this wall with two holes in it, two holes. Mm -hmm. So because it has, you know, some sort of, you know, it can, it can go through this hole or that hole. The holes are closed. It's not very close. So when we, when we, uh, when we, you know, shoot shoot these electrons here, they coming through one hole or another hole, yeah. and it can be tested. When you put like some detectors here and there, right? Detectors for photons or electrons, whatever, they always say that electron or whatever particle comes only through this particle or through here. Through here or through here. Mm -hmm. So we always know that. Now we remove these things, detectors, and we measure what's the distribution of uh, when they hit, uh, when they hit the, the wall, wall here, right? What would be the distribution of electrons going there, right? And we expect that if it goes through one hole, it will be like something like this. So this is more electrons. This is a distribution, the amount of electrons, like this. If you look, mm -hmm. so this is the most dense, dense part. And uh, from this hole, it would be like this, right? If you throw stones, it will be like this. Most of the stones will go there and there, and some of the stones will come here and here okay. and here and here. Understandable? Mm -hmm. So when they start measuring this, they found something different. They found that distribution is going like this. Like a wave. Like a spectrum. Lines. One line. So completely line. independent of where the holes are? Yeah. No, it depends. There are lots of lots of lots of dependence and everything, but the picture is not like like it was like regular particles. Something something definitely was going on there. This picture actually is much closer to when we're talking not about particles but about waves. If you put some waves, if electron was a wave, it will be that kind of distribution. And if photon was a wave, again, it will be that kind of distribution. But we know that by putting detectors here and here, we know that it always goes only through one of these things, right? Mm -hmm. Now they're starting doing some other stuff. They put a detector like just to watch. Did he pass here or he passed here? You know, just watch. Mm -hmm. Electron pa oh, what, which, which hole it passed through. When we put this detector, distribution immediately become normal. Like there were stones or particles. Immediately. <laughs> Remove detector or just not even remove, just turn it off. And you got this. What's in the detector? <laughs> Nothing. They tried all types of detectors, everything. The the most interesting experiment that was made later was that they actually measured it was called delayed experiment. Delayed delayed. Delayed quantum 
I don't know, forgot the, I forgot the term of this, the late, the late experiment. So what, the, what they do actually, they measure, uh, they, they, uh, they induced the separation, there's like sort of certain particles that can divide into two at a certain point, after they pass these oh. holes, okay. after. And those two, they put into this screen when they measure how they're going, right? And these two, much later, because the path is long, much later, then they put detectors here. Mm -hmm. so, so some particles, not electrons, but anyway, they're going through one of the holes, right? Come here, there's a special uh, special plate, right, which, which, which induces this division, right? They divide each into two. Mm -hmm. They come here, they are registered or put into this wall, right? And only later we measure the other thing and then we know because, you know, this or this, we know that this, this put through this hole or that hole. But much later. So this time is much more than this time. Okay? Mm -hmm. Or even we can put these detectors, we can even not put it. We can wait until this already put here, come here, and then put detectors here. After they already absorbed here registered already right and the interesting thing was that if you don't put detectors here you have here this wave picture if you put detectors even one detector not only two we have only two these two peaks that's all as if electrons knew that will be later much later and we start measuring this thing they, it looks like they knew our intention that we're going to put detectors here. Huh. This experiment done like few, just a few years ago and not one, many of them. And they all do, they all do that. So lots and lots and lots and lots of big, big, big questions, right? What is going on in this? This is, was a, one of the greatest mysteries in like in physics, physics ever. They made other experiments, very, very smart ones, and all of them show that it, this, 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 this thing goes all the time. There was one experiment even that we, this delayed experiment, that we measured two photons that goes around some star that some probably like billion light years from us. And one of the photons can go from that side of star and another from that side of, side of star. And we register them there on Earth. Billion years. Billion years mean that this, these photons, they come on the left side, on the right side of the other star. Mm -hmm. Billion years ago. Mm -hmm. And we measure them billion years later. Mm -hmm. Since if we try to register which, <laughs> which path took this thing, right, we come to normal picture. When we not try, we come this wave wave pattern. Just like this. Interference. It's called interference pattern. Interference. Interference pattern is like what? waves. They behave like waves. Oh. Particles behave like waves. Though they they're not waves because they pass like through yeah. through these certain small small things. And obviously actually each each of these particles they leave traces. They're so they're registering uh, devices which will see that the particle goes like that particular trace there like, like a straight line a so-called bubble camera that shows that it goes like like a particle mm -hmm. not a wave yes. so so this was the beginning of the new new era of physics and now we'll talk a little further what how it was explained or whatever after all these experiments and in between these experiments and uh, uh, lots of lots of work was done and uh, there were created two theories quantum theory and 
relativity theory, right? Which are not still not combined together. They actually contradict each other mm -hmm. in many ways. But uh, so again, uh, physics struggled for hundred years already to to combine them. It's not officially not done. Uh, and all the experiments support both theories. It's interesting that experiment says that both theories are correct. They are not, not even one place found that they really, you know, they're, they're not correct one theory or another. Mm -hmm. But the theories contradict each other as a theory. So it's like, like an interesting, interesting thing. So <clears throat> people are trying to, to get out of this paradox, but still it's, we're, we're still there. Uh, now, how it was like it's sort of explanation. You know, there was one guy, I told you, Richard Feynman, who said that nobody understands quantum mechanics. Right a year before he got a Nobel Prize for quantum mechanics, for research on quantum mechanics, quantum electrodynamics. Mm -hmm. So he was right, actually, yes, most of the people did not understand. But some of the things, uh, due to, by the way, Feynman too, we can tell. So let's look at this first small <coughs> small experiment. Then we have a rolling, what's called rolling block, ro like a like a wheel, right? A rolling wheel here, right? We have a table here, and we have a floor here. Maybe like this. And we have a rope. Here's a lots of rope. It goes like here through the rolling thing, and then rope goes like here, and again it lays here on the, on the, on the ground. Uh, what do you think will happen when we create such a device? There's, like for example, there's no friction here, for example, very low friction. It's rolling easily. I would assume that the heavier end of the rope would pull the entire rope to the floor. This part is addition, right? Here, mm -hmm. right, equals in weight. Here in addition. Yeah. Yeah, these particles have more weight than this, so this force is more than force back, right? Mm -hmm. And it will go <clears throat> further until the whole rope of this will will find will come will come this way. Yeah. Don't imagine something similar with this uh, with the experiment with the helium. Remember, he was going up to the yeah, then it spread. After that spread, right? <coughs> so what's uh, what's important here? That rope is connected. Each part of the rope is connected to another one, right? All parts of the rope are connected. Mm -hmm. And that exactly was the explanation of superfluidity and superconductivity. Okay. But there's a there's an important difference. Mm -hmm. All of the liquid started inside of the glass no part of it was outside of the glass to pull it yes I, i'll explain it a little later yes you i agree yes uh, <clears throat> how how started i explained it it's it not not difficult but anyway so the first thing is that uh, what what was understood that is very similar to to this experiment which uh, which is um, which has a interesting name it's siphon effect siphon S siphon Siphon or E, I forgot, Siphon, I think, Siphon, Siphon effect. Because the first, it was actually uh, discovered not with the rope, but with the liquid. Because siphon means to take small parts away from something, if you're using yeah, an eye. Yeah, so with, with the liquid. So what, 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 what was found in the previous physics, right? When you put a tube, you have some liquid here, right? And you put a tube like that here, and if you put first, like by sucking maybe, for first sucking some liquid here, mm -hmm. the whole liquid from this reservoir will go down mm -hmm. and spread here. Okay. Because liquid is difficult to, to actually to break, to, 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 rip, to rip off. So yeah. liquid is like, in this case, it's, it's, it's hold together. Yeah. And that was called the liquid. The same thing as a rope. So. Right. That's so how what, you steal gas from a car. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. They, they they use this thing. Yeah, they suck first, and then the whole the yeah. whole reservoir, uh, the whole tank goes to your to your place. 
That's they say siphon siphon gas. That's what, literally what they say. So uh, actually, uh, this um, uh, this picture belongs to Feynman. Feynman first suggested, but the theories the theories were created before him. He was just suggested interesting explanation. So uh, it was true too. The explanation was like this. So if you have liquid helium, or maybe electrons in this, in the, in the, in the conductor, right, in the wire. Mm -hmm. So these atoms become somehow connected to each other, linked to each other. Mm -hmm. And when they linked, so they are this linked to this, this 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 to this, like this, you know. And when this line of connection collect connects all all the atoms in the piece, right? Then it become superfluid or super or superconducting. Mm -hmm. So what happens? The same thing. If you have this line, right? This line with this connection, it works exactly like this siphon. Remember this? So it may it may go. If you have like liquid here, right? The line of atoms can go here and then go there. And because they are all connected, they connected here and they connected here. That way they goes down up to the end, right? The whole line goes there. Mm -hmm. And the question what, that you asked before, how it can go the first, how it happens that the first no, atoms no go, go no there, you should understand that a very thin layer, there's just few atoms, few atoms mm -hmm. should go up, up there. And they can go because of this, uh, there, there's phenomenon, it's called surface tension. Surface tension, surface tension. It means that atoms of a liquid, for example, helium, they are attracted to the to the atoms of of the wall. And if it's helium, right? So they're attracted to the atom of the wall, and this attraction usually is the force of attraction to, to the atom of the wall is actually stronger than attraction to the between atoms in 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 the helium or whatever liquid. So the surface of the, of, the, of the liquid becomes like this. Because here are still atoms that attract these atoms, like one atom here, one atom here. And it goes spreading up and up and up and up because these atoms are attracting these atoms. Mm. This is a well-known phenomenon before helium and before this. It's, it's like, this the same phenomenon that actually helps liquid to go through the tree. In the tree, there are lots of capillars, mm -hmm. right, See. which are very thin, and then capillar, which is thin capillar, right, the, the surface becomes like this, the surface of liquid, and it goes up to very high actual levels, like a tree. You can imagine, right? So the same thing helps helium to start this process. Just few atoms reach this level, then they go there, the same, the same way, and then they pull all other animals out of out of the thing okay is it a um is it a constant speed at which it spreads or does it accelerate as the process this i have no clue actually i never never studied it that deep mm -hmm. probably it accelerate to a certain point mm -hmm. uh, but uh, anyway this um, liquid the superfluid cannot uh, cannot move faster than this set, certain speed the characteristic speed different with different superfluids because not only helium-4 can be superfluid, there are helium-3 mm -hmm. superfluid and other superfluids. Like for example, like a crazy example of superfluids, there are neutron stars somewhere in the galaxy. We, we, we study them, astronomers study neutron stars, they're called pulsars. They consist of neutronium, uh, neutronium matter, mostly neutrons. Mm -hmm. And those neutrons, uh, they may be there in very, very different, very different situations, very different states. In some of the states, they are in this, in these stars, and they're very heavy stars. Actually, you understand, they're very heavy. They're heavier than sun, for example, our sun. So they they can combine together and become superfluid. So neutrons there, they are denser than our matter, like. 
to the million or more, more times denser than, than our matter. It's very dense and this uh, still can be superfluid. So there are lots of, lots of things happening in our is in that our universe. Is constantly moving as a result? Yes, it moves that there. There may be huge vortices, like a, like a huge vortices with the masses like more than our sun, that actually going like forever there, and lots of other stuff happening there. And it was studied actually because mm -hmm. pulsars, like recently, I told you, right? They were like for like a ten years ago or a little more. I think more than ten years ago, maybe 12, 13 years ago. There was a um, launched. Chandra X-ray telescope and X-ray, not, not, not gamma, X-ray telescope with the purpose of studying neutron stars. Very expensive one, it's more than a billion dollars telescope. Mm -hmm. Since then it's working, what I read like recently, it, it gave us a lots of, lots of data, but I have no clue that's what the data same, they are. That's the same material you mentioned is it indestructible? It's destructible. It's it's uh, it may be destructible. It's, from our point of view, it is yes, it is indestructible. From our point of view, but of course it can be destructed. Just the energy of of resistance of this material is very high. I see. So yes, yes. If you if you if we would be able to neutronium, right? Neutronium. When we would be able to create this neutronium in the lab, right? it may hold like the explosion of thermonuclear bomb inside it. So we can build like small, a small engine which works, which, 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 which have like thermonuclear explosion inside, that will hold this and no radiation will come out. So it's a very, very interesting material, but we don't have it here yet. So, uh, so you see this status they there are links between between the atoms right and it was found that these links can be actually made between almost every almost every similar atoms so if the atoms or particles are identical in a certain way there this link can be established yeah. And it is, called, it is called exchange exchange force, which bind galaxy together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So, and it's definitely uh, this way. While well, studying this, they were studying for a long time. Recently. It's actually 1997. Are we fluidly moving? In 1997, in MIT, there was an experiment which made uh, atoms of rubidium linked like this, and they created so-called. This is called BEC, so Bose-Einstein condensate. So and now we know for sure that helium four and other st the super the electrons in the electrons in the wire when they score, when they come to super superconductivity they create this BEC or different forms of this. This is condensate of different particles actually it can be different particles like electrons or neutrons or like for example helium helium atoms whatever. They connect to each other, link to each other, and uh, they create this state which is called BEC or, or Bose-Einstein condensate. Bose-Einstein condensate. This is a totally new form of matter, very very famous now. So and uh, the study study is ongoing. So, what is interesting about this BC? According to quantum mechanics, and um, according to quantum mechanics, all the electrons, like we have uh, lots of them, I think, 10 to 80 or something, to the power of 80 electrons in the whole universe, right? All these electrons are identical to each other, totally. There is a physical principle, which is called identical principle, actually. 
uh, which said that all electrons in the universe are totally identical to each other. The only thing that differs, they, they differ where they are, their location in time and space. That's all. Oh, yes, sorry. And energy. Energy. What, what, so, I mean, there's at least three different things yeah. about each electron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. they are themselves, they're identical. Like, yeah, themselves. They're, they're the interesting. Time and energy. So, energy, energy, actually, it is called a state, right? Mm -hmm. if, you, uh, if you remember, right? So, they say that the electron can be in different energetic states, mm -hmm. right? But it's still the same electron. And uh, actually, there is a, it's a law. Now it's considered as a physical law, fundamental physical law, that uh, electrons cannot be distinguished from each other at all. And this is confirmed by thousands of experiments. They are indistinguishable. That's to say. The same thing is about protons. Protons, there's probably something about this amount of protons in our universe. They are indistinguishable from each other too. Neutrons and other fundamental particles, the same thing. And also, and the fo photons, right? Photons, same thing. All the photons are the same. Even more, there is a, it's not yet finished, but it's, uh, lots of phys physicists are working on the theory, which uh, actually says that all these particles and all other particles that we know, actually, it's just one particle, uh, which is called different, like prion, like maybe, like, I don't know, whatever, like prion or prion. So just all these are just types of one particle. So that, wait, what? They're all the same themselves or? Get it. All electrons are the same. All electrons, yeah. all protons are the same, all yeah. neutrons are the same, all photons are the same, yeah. and all other particles are the same with their type. Sure. It's one thing. Another thing is that they are all types, or oh, you would say is. energetic okay. levels of one particle, prion, one particle. And of course, as, as with this, all prions are the same. Okay. Given all of these rules and laws regarding how these particles behave, is it still correct to call them a particle? I mean, clearly they're not particles of sand. Yes, uh, yes, they don't behave at all like particles. Yes, it is called wave particle. <coughs> Bless you. Excuse me. Duality, which was discovered or suggested as as explanation for for all these phenomena in. Uh, somewhere near 919, I don't even know, I'm like uh, maybe 12 or something, somewhere, somewhere like this, by, <coughs> by uh, Louis de Broglie, this is a French, a French physicist and uh, aristocrat, de Broglie, right, D, you know, right. And uh, he came with this crazy idea that uh, all the particles are at the same time waves and all the waves at the same time are particles. This is the foundation of quantum mechanics. We will talk on this a little later, I just, just mentioned it, right? So, so, so prion the same, we can call it particle, but it is wave at the same time. And very paradoxical way because, you know, as I as I told you before, with these experiments, right? Uh, nobody can find uh, experimentally at what at what point a particle become a particle or become a wave. It behave it behave like wave in one type of experiments, particle in another type of experiments. And they somehow come together. This is a paradox, actually. It's a well known paradox. Not explained. That's why Feynman, by the way, said the first time the, the first uh, the first time. He said that nobody understands quantum mechanics because it's difficult to to understand how it goes. So, but what I want to uh, to mention at the last, at the end of this, all these like uh, huge amounts of and very much, much, much more, much more, of course, experiments and interesting ideas and everything. Uh, there was an idea uh, that um, 
how it's called apprentice apprentice of albert einstein his name was john john wheeler uh, he come to to the idea that actually electrons they're not only identical to each other they're just one particle just one so the question is how there are that many of them right 10 10 with the 80 zeros right so how it be one particle he suggested that electron can go back in time many times back in time this is t right? like circling and circling and circling go like this and back and of course at any place you, you see three loops you have three electrons like if you return to yourself it's easy right we know this all these movies with the time travelers right you return and see yourself you doubled right so even clones you're yourself you you go again you have three of you you can go multiple times you have lots of you can go 10 to to, to the 80 to the power of 80 times you'll have that amount of electrons and uh, richard Feynman. Uh, actually, he heard this idea from John Wheeler, and he created a theory, of this, which, is co which is called one, one electron universe. They were talking about electrons, right? One electron universe. The same thing you may say about one proton universe, one neutron universe, and to the end, one prion universe. There is a problem with this theory. <coughs> which which uh, uh, we'll, we'll talk later uh, why it is not widely accepted it's very wild right but it's still not accepted uh, it was published but anyway that's the problem is that when returning according to the modern views when returning back in time these electrons which show show up to us as so-called positrons which are not electrons but anti-electrons antimatter so we should have the same amount of electrons normal matter and same amount of positron antimatter in our universe but whatever experiments were done antimatter was never really found in the universe just in small amounts that we create in our lab itself and some some somewhere but very tiny amounts Okay, question. Paradoxical question relating to the traveling back in time and positrons. Uh, if an electron travels back in time once and then again once to the same time period, would there now be two positrons? Does that make sense? Two positrons and one electron? Just trying to figure out why. No, but you should make a loop to return, right? Yeah, if you yeah. have one electron. So if you go there, just a loop. If you return, it's a, make one loop, you have two electrons and. Uh, and two positrons actually, or maybe one right, positron. Right, in, in the current theory. But the fact is, why does it have to be a loop specifically? I mean, a loop is just an illustration. No, that's an idea. The loop is because we're starting from the idea that there's only one electron. If yeah. there's only one electron, the only way how we can create another electron is to make a loop. Uh, it's beyond me, but... No, what, 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 I don't understand why it has to be a loop. No, okay, so the other way is it should be multiplied somehow. Mm -hmm. But there will be two electrons there. If you if you just go and then it's uh, broken to two electrons, for example, it, it's it's not possible, but anyway, that, like this is the weird, weird example. So if you, uh, if you divide it into two, right, there will be two electrons. But this is not one electron theory. It's a two electron theory, okay? Just, just that. I just explain in this way, that's all. It's just about explanation, how it explained. Mm -hmm. They explain that it makes loops, and that's all. And that's why there are lots of electrons, right? The problem is that there should be a, a lots of anti-electrons, or positrons. And this is the problem of this theory. That's why it's not accepted. The same thing we can tell, you can tell about prion, right? <coughs> if you imagine prion going back mm -hmm. in loops, mm -hmm. there's a one prion. And the, it generates somehow just returning. Well, that's the thing. It's yeah. my next question: is if you go around once in this theoretic loop, mm -hmm. that makes a an anti-prion. 
And then if that antiprion makes a loop, it makes a prion again, which means there are two particles. One prion and one antiprion, and that's it. Yeah, but uh, that's right. But uh, the only thing why we're talking about one prion or one electron, because it's still electron just moving back in time. Mm -hmm. the electron, it's the same electron, when it's moving back in time, it looks to us like it is positron. Mm -hmm. That's the modern explanation of actually positrons, that they are electrons that are moving back in time. This is like accepted. This is accepted in modern, modern science. Just they don't make loops or something like this. Like, like this. <clears throat> So, and in this case, if you, if you go, go further with this theory, you'll have only one prion, right? And this prion is the same as the universe. Because there are nothing, nothing in the universe except this one prion. Mm -hmm. So, if you, if you go with this theory further, we will have one prion universe. Which shows us like many, 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 many particles of different types and everything like this. And we have all this amount of everything around us. So the one prion keeps... Keeps it, rotating, yeah. And keeps. it makes all of the universe. Mm -hmm. Which is paradoxical because it's clearly very different from each other. <coughs> <sighs> clearly very different from each other. And the difference is... is you are not the same as me and the whiteboard is not the same as the monitor. If it's all the same prion, then something must differentiate one from another. Yeah, there's yeah, remember, some characteristics to separate one from the other. I remember the only difference in the beginning was like uh, these coordinates and uh, energy, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So energy is relative to some type. So why it's relative? Because if you if electrons pass like this, right, with a great velocity, right, you have big energy, right? Mm -hmm. But when you go, you yourself with your measure device, like your ruler, right? You go with the same velocity, your relative velocity is zero, right? Relative velocity equals to zero. And the energy of electron becomes zero too. Because electron is not moving in your system of reference. So energy is a little, you know, it's, energy is relative to a certain weight. So... So it's all about like speeds and uh, and positions, right? But speeds and positions here they may be a little different because there's tiny, tiny, tiny changes in loops, not 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 changes in prions or electrons, changes in loops, right? Loops are a little different, and they it's like the same thing as for example, you are standing between two mirrors. You know what happens when you stand between two mirrors? There are lots of reflections, right? And they go further from the infinity to both directions. You will see the long corridor, right? Of you standing, right? There. So it will be lots of you. So the reflection, actually, reflection, it, it could be made not only by, by this, by this way. Returning to yourself, the loop, is the same as reflection. Like if you look this way, you see yourself. Mm -hmm. If you have somehow can curve the, the you know this the, the line of light on line of sight right so the same idea like to stand before before be, between two mirrors same thing same thing is here do you actually believe in this theory this one in lesson? this I not only believe I totally uh, totally know that this is this is true we will talk about this a little later and this problem of antimatter too let me just uh, explain a little way what, what is going on Okay, I think that's just the time. Is, uh, so, any other questions? Okay. There's one thing. Okay. Uh, okay, okay. No, no. Ask. No, I don't. I don't have. I don't have a question per se. It just seems to me how you've described it. There's the one. I can't say that word. What is it? Pre. 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 On. Pre. On. Pre on, and then just energy, and that's it. That's what makes it different for it for everything else that we see. That's different. Um, yeah, if you talk about energy, actual explanation of energy, yeah. right? But isn't it, isn't it generating the energy as well? In its... Yes, in a certain way. I will tell you, energy, energy, if you think about what 
energy is is your potential or potential of certain particle right yeah to 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 make some changes to make some changes and uh, for example if you have the line of time <coughs> you have time right in in the beginning of time you make some choice this way or that way when you go mm. like the, the like the road that we, you choose right then at this uh, this is t equals zero right then at the t1 you made another choice I see. here and here here and here then another choice right and those are doubling this is a geometric geometric prog progression mm -hmm. they're going very fast it's exponential growth right so a uh, lots of choices right and but uh, if you so if you if you look at this picture you see that the influence of this point is the greatest then comes this point then 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 this and here like up to the certain moment like current time right current time you can you can make some small changes but they're not that big the biggest changes you can do if you return here what i what i meant that or what i mean now right that the further particle is in time back in time the more influential more influential it is so the change that particle can make in the beginning of time is the butterfly it's called butterfly effect by the way when when they travel in time so you go you step on the butterfly remember this famous story and this butterfly caused a lot of changes in your world in your current time right yeah so the the, the further you go to the back in time the more influential it is for your current time and this influence it's exactly it can be shown mathematically it's exactly what we uh, what we name energy, what we say energy. Mm. It is energy. The further particles in time, the more energetic it is. So in here, if you're making loops, the, the, the particle that's starting the loop is the most influential. Then the second, then, then the blah, 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 blah. And they create the hierarchy of energy, actually. So it's the same particle, but it has the different energy because it's one in the beginning of the loops, here, here is another loop, there is another loop, another loop, another loop, another loop. So this is energy. Okay. Nope, no questions? Okay guys, so see you.